Okay, good after morning. Good afternoon. Kijk hoe mooi is alle mensen. Ons wacht voor jullie. Kijk hoe mooi is mijn vrouw. Look at the makeup. She did makeup for I you today. today. So she looks all made up. All right, we got a face. We got an eyeball. Don't know who is, but okay. Hi. We are live. And. Um, Oh, did we normally do the live on the on the on the phone? On the phone, but I don't have the okay. I don't have the password to set that. Okay, so we normally did it on the phone. Now we're on the on the mm -hmm. laptop. Hopefully, um, the camera on the laptop is not too bad, and we don't look too terrible. Um, so we're ready for questions. Good morning. Good to have you there. So. Uh, for the family, this is primarily for Lighthouse family, and uh, of course anyone's free to, to watch and listen. A lot of what we say doesn't make a lot of sense to, uh, to those that don't understand what we've been talking about, the season of, of God and our understanding of what God has been doing in the earth. Um, uh, Dot says, hello, good morning, Dot. Hi. Um, so, particularly for our family, as uh, you know, we have been on a journey looking at what God is doing in the earth. And uh, we've been seeing how God is establishing uh, a standard in the earth. And so, um, hopefully, if you have questions concerning that, as a family, you feel free to ask. Um, we have Ju we have Juan and Kerwin with us. Always, <laughs> Juan and Kerwin. <clears throat> so as you know, Hi, we um, we released a, a message on Friday and today, addressing um, the issue of racism as it pertains to us. And understanding of what that means in the in the church, and uh, what God is doing, and what our responsibility is towards that. So maybe there 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 will be some questions there. Um, all the way from England, Shireen. Well done. Good to have you joining us. And uh, so we are we are free to uh, be questioned. We had a, a, a break last week, so hopefully yeah, you had. Yeah, you guys a, had a lovely week last week and <clears throat> Father's Day. Yeah, hopefully, I am. I am a pastor, so um, according to the new regulations, I'm allowed to do pastoral visits. So I must confess, I did a pastoral visit last week with my uh, father. They've kept themselves nicely isolated and um, away from or uh, potential uh, viral infections but uh, we did a pastoral visit and enjoyed being with him and i'm sure many of you made plans to try and be with your family all right so uh, big hugs from juan juan is if we if we ever give a prize juan for the most faithful um, questions uh, uh faithful uh, um watcher or the one who's always joining mm -hmm. in on the sessions It'll definitely be you um yep and you kerwin the, you there kerwin except kerwin doesn't kerwin but kerwin works um he so he doesn't do the gym sessions with us yeah, no. joan has done the gym sessions mm -hmm. with us we do um gym for some of you that know mondays wednesdays and fridays uh on, on incrementum. incrementum fitness yeah so um on their web no, on their Facebook mm -hmm. uh, site. And mom just joined. And um, hi, mom. So, there we go, mom. So, um, if uh, uh, if you want to join us in the gym sessions, mom also joins in the gym sessions. She finds all types of different ways of doing exercise and keeping fit. Uh, so, 
But John, you you get the prize. I don't know what the prize is. The prize is when we allow to hug, you get a hug. A big hug. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, Perwin. Sam Bye. talks about the racism in USA. How does that play out in our rainbow nation? Okay, so racism mm -hmm. is um, is not unique to to any part of the world. It is found across all parts of the world. Yeah, and um, as I mentioned in our in our messages. It, it's also not got to do with skin color. Oddly enough, it's, it's actually much more to do with culture than it does have to do with skin culture. Um, you mean skin color? Skin color. <laughs> so you'll know of some atrocities that have happened in Africa in recent history. Um, Burundi and Uganda and um, the Hutsis and Tutsis, for instance, um, were killing each other yeah. um, soon after what was supposed to be a, a revival, a great revival. And both those tribes claimed to be Christians. But the one tribe called the other tribe um, cockroaches and wanted to absolutely wipe them out. And um, so that was, that was genocide, but it comes from racism. It's when any one group or any one um, affiliation that you identify with regards themselves for any reason um, to be more superior or more informed or more special or more worthy. Um, and uh, so you start distinguishing between the affiliation that you have, the culture that, that you identify with and others that don't do the things uh, the way you do it or don't believe what you believe or don't look like you look. So um, it's been made to look like it's, um, it's a black and white thing. But we know even in, in South Africa, how it plays out in South Africa, um, that even within our colored community, there's, there's a, a racial attitudes we all know about the pencil test and to say, uh, is your hair straight or is it too curly? And that would, and, and believe me, I've been to places in Cape Town where there's a, a racial discrimination between coloreds that speak English and coloreds that speak Afrikaans. And the English speaking coloreds will have nothing to do with Afrikaans speaking coloreds. And um, in a sense, despise them. Um, people despise different uh, um, aspects of, for instance, some might say we are we are educated. We are not like the uh, the what uh, klopse the, the ones that the minstrels. We don't associate with that because we are of a different class. And and so um, racism can can find um, various forms. Um, but all of this, um, Kerwin, you're asking about how it plays out in our rainbow nation. All of this is actually the world standard and how the world sees and how the world judges. It's got nothing to do with um, the church and what God is doing in the church. What God is doing in the church is a different standard. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a nation. It's a holy race, a holy nation. It's, um, it's a peculiar people, and it's nothing to do with by any other cultural affinity to, towards um, color or culture that you, that you uh, have an allegiance to uh, above being in Christ and then entering into the love that God has for His sons, those who are brothers and sisters. And so... Um, for the church, we we live by a whole different standard. We we don't we don't discern according to the flesh, nor do we enter into the pity parties that the world is entering into. We don't feel sorry for ourselves as if we are not privileged. 
we are the most privileged people on the face of the earth because we have access to the greatest source of supply, greatest source of protection and provision. Um, we have the greatest elite identity of any human being walking on the face of the earth ever. There is no higher position that anyone on earth in human form could ever ascribe to than what we hold as sons of God. When we enter into that reality, we don't start feeling sorry for ourselves about um, what culture group doesn't like me or what culture group sees me as different from them. Um, it's a different reality that we have to learn to, to, to walk in and live in. And um, I think too often we, 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 we think like the world does and we, we even use the terms white church and black church and it's, it's, it's sad when you, when you see that the church enters into the same level of thinking as the world. Um, so those who are part of the family um, of our spiritual house know that there is, it's very difficult even for me to think of what is our racial demographic mm -hmm. because you don't think of people in that, in that um, way. Um, and when you see our family tree, you see our family relationships. Um, my, my spiritual father is, is a man of dark skin. And it was funny. It's, I must tell you this. This is quite interesting. Um, we used to go to a lot of um, the, the meetings, even in Santon that they had, uh, uh, that Tom uh, would host, and uh, the, the, the ASIMs and, and, oh, and, yeah, and the different meetings like that. And so very often there would be a lot of uh, apostolic uh, fathers that would be there speaking. And I must have been going to, to those meetings for a couple of years before one day, just like, it dawned on me. I looked up front and I saw Thamu and Dr. Saggy and uh, Sam standing up front. And they, they are three of the most prominent speakers at these conferences and, and apostolic fathers that we looked at. And I realized for the first time, I never saw it before. I realized that they're all of Indian descent. And I didn't realize, I mean, I never saw them that way. Oh, Dharma is Indian descent. And Saggy is Indian. Indian yeah. and, um, and Sam is uh, uh, the West Indian descent is the, the, the Caribbean dark skin. So um, I didn't even see it that, uh, that way before. But it was just funny when, when, when it dawned on me. Wow, look at that. Um, so Sam is my spiritual father and he's as dark as as um, most people that are called black or colored. Um, and I have spiritual sons that are all colors. And I don't, I don't see, um, the color. I don't see one any mm -hmm. different from the other. And uh, that's how, that's how it is in the household of, of, of God. Uh, when we adopted into the house of God, we adopted on, uh, on a basis of we are one spirit with him. And that's how we see. We see, I see in Sam um, a man of maturity that I want to emulate in, in, in every way. Uh, the last thing that I would ever think about is, is the, the color of his skin. Um, and uh, as I said, anyone that still sees that and looks at that, either as feeling of themselves as superior or, I dare say, feeling uh, uh, inferior for any reason, does not understand who they are in Christ. And in fact, you are still immature. You are still a babe if, um, if those are the things mm. that you see and define yourself by. Okay, are there any questions? No, I haven't seen I'm waiting for I'm waiting for questions, guys. Otherwise, we're going to make this a short, sh short session. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a short session, but short session. Uh, a short, short session. <laughs> okay.
I just really want it looks like I have like a lot of butt chins there, but I don't know what that My is. My wife has got dimples. What are you doing? Give you a dimple. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? You're so sweet. I say ni Okay. Um are there any are there any questions? I don't know how to say your last name, that's why I didn't say it. Because I'm sure I'll say it wrong. Dot's last name. Phyllis. Phyllis. Dot, you are not Phyllis because it's not I E L L. It's I. So it's Phyllis, ne? Um I wish you can tell you. <laughs> we you know it is it is unique. Uh, our spiritual house um that's called Lighthouse is is in a unique situation in that we've been on a journey since 1982 where, where God spoke to my, my father to open up the doors to people of all uh, all nations and all races. And um, those years, it was the height of apartheid. It was really still called um, a state of emergency. We weren't allowed to associate and do just about anything uh, with with people of a different race, and um, God was already at work within us to see people differently and experience it differently. And um, thirty-eight years later, uh, it's it's almost we don't even think or see color, even though I've heard um, people use the terms. Um, Referring actually to Lighthouse as a white man's church, and I'm thinking those poor immature ones who, who can't who can't see the wood for the trees because all they see is color. But for us, it's been an absolute joy, mm. and it's an absolute. Um, it is a taste of, I want to say, a taste of heaven on earth. But it is heaven on earth because we're living the reality of what comes from from heaven. We're living it on earth. So, um, yes, are there any other questions? Yeah, um, it's Kerwin, second question. Oh, you, no. Johan has questions. Sorry, I didn't see that. What does Johan say? Well, there's questions. Yeah, but Kerwin had another <clears> one first. Okay. No, I, I see Johan says... Where is it? He also... Sorry. Oh, it came up later. Okay, my wife. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Okay, it came up later. Okay, well, I can't read when she moves the scroll. Okay, so Joan has, has got a couple of questions. Uh, our things are hidden in the deep. Many things of God is hidden in the deep. Can you explain this more? Chapter 45. Okay. Uh, all right, shall we go there first? First, talk about the deep. <clears throat> so, in before creation, God is. Uh, God is outside of creation. He is not inside of time. He is not inside of creation. So, He stands outside of that. But um, before creation, God didn't have or need a physical form. Um, so, God is known as the deep the waters, the word, uh, the spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. The waters covered the earth. That was before. Uh, and so God is described as, as the deep being. I was actually, uh, John, this is interesting. I was dr um, driving along a stormy, stormy uh, coastline. <clears throat> and I realized, I don't know if any of you have ever gone um, scuba diving or even snorkeling. I've done snorkeling. That was fun. Uh, my wife has snorkeled with me in calm waters. But have you ever gone snorkeling in in rough waters mm -hmm. where, there oh, are, <laughs> where there are rocks around you and, and the water splashing up against the rocks and... From the outside of of the uh, the ocean, it looks very stormy and it's it's scary. And in fact, even when you're in 
the water with your with your snorkel and your goggles on when you lift your eyes up out of the water it's like there's anxiousness that comes upon you because it's rough and it's smashing against rocks and it's it looks so scary the minute you put your face into the water it's calm it's an amazing thing it's just the movements of seaweed and like this but the more and this is the this is the analogy i want to bring to you the more that you are in the deep the less you become aware of the storms mm. of life no matter how the storm is raging on the surface those who find themselves in the deep of who god is are blissfully unaware of how the world is raging trying to catch their breath when things are crashing and smashing and the waves are tumbling it's very scary if you've ever been in in the ocean with big waves it's one of the most frightening fearful things it's i love surf uh, uh, body surfing and i love swimming in 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 big waves but man it's it's scary you see that big thing get it tumble down on you if you were just a little bit deeper you don't you're not even aware that there are waves that are crashing and storming and and god is that he is so the deep that um the storm on the surface is like the world and it's like the things that we see in creation uh, but in god it's it's so far removed from the things that that really concern us in 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 god in the deep there's such a calm it's such a absolute calm from it's like everything in the ocean the the waves and the storms yeah they controlled from the deep the surges but when you're in there you're not you're not aware of them you don't even you don't even see them or experience that way but on the surface it has this effect <clears throat> and that's what god is god is god is so much more than um when we are sick we want him as a healer or when we have need we want him as the provider he's so much more than that he's he's the deep and everything that is in creation comes out of this uh, the deep of who god is and he's existed as the deep and so this is the relationship between um the waters of the word and the spirit um the waters uh, jesus is is described as um the living water uh, the word is is the water that washes us but it comes out of the deep of who god is and god's spirit hovers over those waters we sing those songs that kerwin even wrote um so um yeah there's a little bit of a comment on that um i was up at two okay so maybe question three because two is just a confirmation question okay well what is yeah the scroll okay so you got questions my brew okay good if no one else asks questions we'll just go through juan's thank you juan we'll probably on zoom today uh, okay um the scroll that has seven seals who christ holds the lamb jesus who died for our sins well the lamb is 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 uh was slain before Jesus died for our sins the, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the earth but yes is worthy to open the scrolls um does the scrolls contain information about our future and the hidden mystery and the secrets of god yeah so the scrolls are all uh, that is in the mind of god concerning that which is to come and in the appropriate time <clears throat> so as you know a scroll is represented by something that's unraveled it's got the the knob and then from the knob it's it's rolled up and um if you read from the scroll you have to get to the right place on the scroll and that's almost like a depiction of um not chronos but kairos this is the time in which god is doing this and when when that thing has been revealed um it is it is god's foreknowledge it's god's what god has determined what's god's always known is uh, is contained in the scrolls and is unraveled in its right 
time in its right season becomes known and is made known as and is declared Jessica okay so yeah. Jessica my sis she says after after listening to today's message I have a question regarding racial issues since we have a good understanding about the topic and you're just bringing it across in simplicity this morning how do we deal with our biological family who still dwells on racial issues without sounding or being condescending because they really live with discrimination and they were affected by its adversity so much so that they are still dwelling on it and that's a really good question yeah 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 good yeah, one, yeah, yes. yeah yeah it's a good question but it is. but mm-hmm. but 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 so mm-hmm. this is true not just for racial discrimination mm-hmm. this is true there's something here on my screen that is bothering me this is true actually concerning every consideration of the soul if we think of that which pertains to um, how we see provision and protection mm-hmm. how we see economic economy how we see all these things those that are not in Christ that have the compulsion of the soul to have to provide for yourself you are then you buy into all the lies of um, provision and protection and how we have to strive to make that and then you tap into that and then the lie continues yeah i don't have because others have because in that world view there's only limited resources and if i don't have is because someone else has and so the way to have is to take it from them so that i can have take from the rich give to the poor because we previously were disadvantaged all of that mm-hmm. is got to do with living out of economy of this world that our resources are what we can get for ourselves and our provision and our protection so it's not just racial issues uh, that that Jessica is talking about that live um in the in the pain of the discrimination so yeah the discrimination was real which is and is still real um people experience it so too is the financial situation in south africa is real it's a rechte gemors the political situation the 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 abuse that you get at work for being a christian and being righteous and and having integrity all of that stuff is real but we don't find our identity in trying to supply for ourselves and our needs out of the systems of this world we don't have to find affirmation out of the systems of this world we don't have to find an identity we don't have to find our provision we don't have to find our protection so this has got to do with all aspects of life including the aspect of how we see ourselves racially discriminated and living in in that reality it's because we don't live in the reality of who we are in Christ so what do we do with our family that is unsaved same as what we do when they are when they are concerned about the economy and when they're concerned about this and provision and protection and what's going to happen to the political system and what's going to happen to the the ozone that's falling apart and global warming and everything else that people worry about as if um god is 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 not in control um the same we live by a different standard while they remember that analogy i have of the snorkeling in the ocean while they pulling their head up and looking at the storm and becoming fearful mm-hmm. we just get into the deep and when we into 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 christ and we we in the deep at peace mm-hmm. and we live in peace and they have to be confounded by the peace that passes understanding not our understanding their understanding because mm-hmm. they can't understand how we can be in peace yeah how we can not be hurt when others discriminate against us and they can be discriminate for all reasons hey, believe me as much as colored people and black people have been discriminated against in south africa and in america and wherever my wife has been discriminated against because she was asian and more recently 
I guess I'm discriminated against because I'm white. When that affects you and you find your, you still live in the hurt of that, then you are still living in the flesh. You're still living in your past. You're still living in that identity of that person who was. But when you're a new person in Christ, you can't identify with that. So you can't live with the pain of that. Mm. So um, you let it go. You let it go and you walk in the newness of who God has called you to be in your identity, firstly. I'm a son of God. It is the highest. Man, listen, you don't have to like Prince Charles. You don't have to like him at all. You could actually, if you want to, say ugly things about him. But it doesn't affect who he is. He is still Prince Charles. He is still, he is still the next in line on the throne. Yeah, for sure. Whether you like him or not, whether you say ugly things about him all day long, whether you mock him for his bakura or whatever you want to do, it doesn't affect him unless he allows it to affect him because actually he is Prince Charles. He is mm -hmm. the royalty. He is. And so when we, and that's just, that's, that's just on earth. When we enter into the reality of who we are, how on earth can what people think about us, say about us, have done to us, affect us? Even in the church, they're going to do much worse. The time is coming that there's going to be much more persecution for the church. And it's not because of your race or your color. It's going to be because you are in Christ. And in that, we're going to live in a new reality and the glory of God will be revealed in and through us. But we have to live by that grace. We have to live in that economy. We have to receive from God that, in, that identity, but the empowering as well to live in that, in that reality. Okay. Wait, let me give two sins. Yes. I actually have two sins. It's not much. They're my babies. Um, Jess, I think the biggest thing, though, is that you don't need to engage in the sense that you don't need to challenge. You don't need to address it. Only if they come to you and say, Jessica, how do I? Then you can speak to them, speak into their lives about it. But until then, that's like you're just tossing pearls Pearl before, before a swine. swine. They're not going to accept it. They're not going to see it. And the main thing is just to live it. That's the biggest thing. You love them and give them grace for where they're at. You don't judge them. That will come in time. Um, but you love them. And you live according to how God has called you to live as a son in your identity, living that out. They will come to you at the right time. They wouldn't be ready for anything right now. And that's the biggest, that's one of the biggest things I think I've learned in this whole thing. That's why I'm not really for myself, not spouting anything about politics and about this and about that and about yonder. I don't need to stick my nose in it. I don't need to get involved. I need to be accountable to what God's called me to do. And it's not that. So. It makes it easy. My soul wants to. <laughs> See, I'm I'm an activist. I want to. My soul wants to. And that's why I had to repent a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I publicly had to repent. Um, and Sam spoke into my life. And I wanted to get involved in these things because somehow I still see myself as a citizen of South Africa. And um, what about the injustice? And I must take responsibility as a citizen. I must stand up against the corruption and the injustice and the hutus. And the truth is, my citizenship is in heaven. And there's things that I'm getting upset about in the earth, in South Africa in our politics and in our racial discrimination and in whatever else upsets you, that has to happen. God says it will happen. So if you think that we're going to have world peace, no, it's not you, are, you, are, <laughs> you are on something that yes. is taking you on no, a trip because there is not going to be world peace. No matter what we do, all the hungry will not be fed. All the people will not be feeling safe and secure and feeling affirmed and feeling equally as loved and equally as important. What we know will happen. God said it will happen, so it must happen. Is, in fact, ethnos 
will against turn against ethnos. ethnos. That nation is the word. Ethnos will turn against. Things are going to get rough and it's not going to get better. And if you think what we're doing is trying to fix the world, you're in a hiding for nothing. Because that's not what we're doing. What we are doing is being a standard in this world that is falling apart. So the more you identify as a citizen of this world and try and fix this world, you are you're going to be frustrated beyond belief. But when you about that which is God, mm -hmm. what God is doing, God is establishing the mountain of the house of the Lord. He's establishing his standard. That stuff is going to happen. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're about that, and when we're about being that standard in the world that's falling apart, that is a that's a different story. Now we don't have to try and fix the world that refuse to live by God's principles but want the benefits and the reward of, of the blessing. It's not going to happen. So we have to see it in the body of Christ. So what we have to see is people come to maturity in the body of Christ. We need to see people because remember the inheritance that you have, you don't get to... Uh, 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 claim that inheritance if you're not a mature son. And God wants to bring us to maturity so that we can handle these affairs and we can come into the fullness of, oh, of that. Question. Letitia has a question. But um, there are some other things that, Joanne, you asked about the scrolls. Yes, the scrolls aren't changing because God doesn't change. And those are the things that God foreknew. He's, uh, there's no shadow of turning with God. Um, so, okay, let's see what Letitia hey, says. Tish, let's see. Um, how do you avoid spiritual arrogance when engaging with Christians that are still camping in a previous dispensation that was relevant back then? How do you encourage them to move to the next move of God? Yeah, Tish, it's, it's difficult. I often encounter people that are on a different page. Um, and yeah, it's 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 usually just lack of maturity. They they still see things with the same eyes as the world does, and they they Christians, and it and it frustrates me because I want them to see, I want them to see, and I want them to stop talking the nonsense and the and the same language and the same level of thinking that the world has. But um, we can't. We can't be arrogant as if um, as if we are something special for having eyes that see. All we have is we have a clearer picture. Um, and so it's, it's almost as if God wants us to walk in the light that we have. And that light radiate enough to, um, to provoke a sense of... Um, Jealousy, if you want, to provoke them to, to want to come into that reality. See, when, when you, in this world, in fear and in trepidation and in anxiety and in bitterness and in resentment and all these things that you want to carry, and when you're walking in that, and next to you is a son of God who's in peace, who has joy, who has supernatural provision, who has absolute um, calm in the storms, uh, it has to trigger something in the others. And um, there is going to come a great falling away. Those who want to serve a God by their own standard, in other words, God must fit in with how I want him to, to suit me and, and, and fit me, um, and who want their ears tickled by preachers who will just preach the, the, the six ways to be blessed and to be happy and to get what you want. Um, those will fall away, even as the, 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 the ministries and preachers and the institutions that uh, propagate this false gospel uh, starts to crumble and be exposed. But as God's raising up a standard and they see the true thing, they will either say, we want truth. They'll be seekers of God, seekers of truth, that when you walk in the light and you walk in the truth, they'll have a standard by which they can come mm -hmm. and uh, be aligned, correctly aligned. But those who don't want to, 
who call themselves Christians, there is going to be in these last days a great falling away. Oh, yeah. A great falling away. And uh, we can't make as if we must. We can't catch them. We we can't renew their minds. Mm -hmm. We can be the, the standard and we can be the light. We can be the mountain of the house of the Lord. We can be a city on a hill, but we can't change their mindsets. But when they want to be renewed in their minds, we can be a standard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, I can't force my children to want to get married and to want to have a good, healthy husband-wife relationship. I can't force them. If they want to remain single and they want to even not get married and stay together and all of these things, <laughs> I can't force them. I can't force them to think the way I want them to think. Yeah. But what I can do, what I absolutely must do, and it is my responsibility and within my power, is to be an example. I and Charlotte have to be the example that they can see and say, I want that. Yeah. That's real. Works and all. When they see all the rubbish that's happening in the world, and they see all the fake, and they see all the other alternatives falling apart, they must be able to look to us as a standard and say, that is real, and I want that. Yeah. And that's the same with the world. I'm not arrogant in saying I'm a good husband. But I have to be diligent. I have to be a good husband. And I have to be a good father if I'm going to expect them to be a good father. And I have to be the standard so that they can follow me as I follow Christ. And so I think, Letitia, that's, that's, it's not about arrogance, but it is about being the standard without trying to whip them over the head with a Bible. And Bible, you know, people that, that, that try and preach to the world and say you mustn't do this and you mustn't do that and you mustn't money rook ni money fluk ni money drunk ni money you know that's such an irritation <laughs> don't don't tell them that <laughs> stuff be a standard that they want to follow so when their things are not working they'll have a standard that to they can to. say teach us his ways and i believe yeah. That's what God is saying. Okay, where are we, my baby? Well, I was at Juwan's questions. You just okay, that, I, um, there's no more new questions. You sure want to see? Yeah, you it's Jessica. See. I Joseph is there with Jesus, us. There's just no new questions. Um, I okay, I'm going to go back to Juwan's um, question. So I, I answered that one about the scrolls. Or, um, Maybe number five. So, Juwan, as as I said last time, I love this about about uh, uh, you, a young man, and uh, I see this in, in many others. It's not so much just questions because you don't know. It's, it's things that you're confirming in your heart as you're coming mm -hmm. into the understanding. Yeah. So I love it. But yes. So instead <laughs> of saying does, I can say um, you are confirming certain things as heaven indicates the staging area for things God wants to realize first uh, goes from heaven and then comes into the earth. So not realize in terms of God suddenly wakes up, uh, but realize in terms of he wants to make it real in creation. Mm -hmm. So the things in heaven are installed in heaven to come into the earth. So this is how it does. So when God's intent and purposes, to fulfill his intent and purposes, he then created the heavens and the earth. And he installed in heaven that which is to come into the earth. And so to use the analogy that, that Thamu used, God wants to plunder heaven and bring heaven into earth. And that all that is installed in heaven needs to be plundered, in a sense, needs to be activated to be received and brought into the earth. And, and I believe when this happens, when everything that has been installed in heaven to come into the earth, that which is in the mind and the intent of God, has been actualized, made manifest through the sons of God in the earth, then there will be a new heaven and a new earth. 
that's what I believe. I believe the new heaven and new earth will come about when that which has been installed in the the first heavens and the first earth um, comes about, and God um, God brings about that which He began, the good work that He began. All right. Um, so then your last question, Johan, it speaks of the lamb that was slain, is worthy to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and blessing. We are in the lamb. We are entitled to this inheritance as being part of the lamb. Everything that is Christ's, everything that belongs to Christ is for us. Mm -hmm. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that pertains to Christ that does not apply to us. It is ours. Because, um, like me and my wife, when we got married, and God says, you two have become one. One flesh. Everything that is mine is hers. And in fact, no matter who or what I had, she becomes a partaker of it. It's true for her. It's hers. Because we are one. And so to everything that is true of Christ is ours. It is our inheritance. It is for us to, um, to live in the reality. We are literally one with the Spirit of Christ. We are assembled into Him. We are His body. And so that which is true that's why we are called not just heirs, we are called joint heirs with Christ. Everything that is inherent in Christ is ours. The, the, everything. The glory, the provision, the, the intimacy, the, the mandate to display the Father, all of that is ours. And all the grace and provision to enable that as it was available to Christ is available to us. He says, I can call on 10,000 angels. Yes, it is available to us. And um, we, even when we're going through tribulation, when we're going through trials, when we're going through persecution as the church, which is going to happen? The world is going to turn against it because they hate the standard that we are, because our standard is exposing the darkness. And when we go through that, there will be a grace from heaven the same as what was available to Jesus Christ when he was walking on the earth. That he can stand before Pontius Pilate or whoever else he stands and says, you have no authority over me. Yeah, the cool, the cool thing and, and it's things that I think the Lord is just showing me is that, you know, I know some, um, I don't want to say churches, some pockets in the, in the thing in, in I really don't know how to say it, but people are saying, making a big deal about there will be miracles and this, and they're, they're literally chasing after the signs um, or the outward showing. But I don't think it's something that we have to necessarily chase after. I don't think there's any mandate for us to do that. I think as we are living out <clears throat> and as things get worse and as things um, escalate in the world, it's going to be only a natural outflow that signs and wonders will begin happening, not because we're so amazing and whatever, um, but because um, that's what God's doing. And he's going to be saying, I can trust you. I know you have my heart and I will use you as a display for my glory. And it's just, it's, we won't even have to ask the Lord, Lord, please do a miracle. Lord, I want this. I want that. It's just, it's going to happen um, as we just go deeper into him. Hmm. So, so Susie, Susie says living by the economy of God has become uh, a stark reality and a profound truth. How do you experience this? How do we experience <laughs> this? I believe, and I was saying this to, to Nigel the other day, I believe that those in the household of God, and, and I'm saying this over our spiritual house, those who are part of um, my spiritual sons, and those who are relating to this, this grace that the Lord has brought and this understanding that the Lord has brought through apostolic grace of Sam. Um, I believe 
that there will be no lack Absolutely. in our house. There will be no lack in the in the in our house household of faith. And I believe that as people come into the understanding of not only who they are in Christ, but fully living and coming to maturity as sons of God in the reality of our identity and our provision and our protection to enable the mandate that God mm -hmm. has given us to put him on display. When we live in that reality, I believe there will be no lack. There will be supernatural provision, supernatural protection, supernatural wisdom, supernatural understanding, grace upon grace for every situation when it gets impossible, when it looks to the world impossible, we are going to flourish and there are going to come times when when it is, and, I, and I'm saying this to, to Lighthouse because God has warned us to be connected in family. And, and those who say they are part of Lighthouse, but they're only part of a congregation, they're not connected in family in the household of God. Um, those are the ones that are going to be struggling more. Yeah, completely. And I'm seeing this already. Those who are connected in the household of God, who are connected in an alignment with how grace flows and how authority flows, there will be no lack. And we're going to live in this as a reality. It's not just during lockdown, it is the new reality. We talk about the new normal. The new normal for those who are in Christ in this world and who are coming to maturity in the understanding of these things is that there will be no lack. There's going to be a supernatural provision on all levels to enable us to be who God has already determined we have to be and we're going to be. There is a grace. There is a grace and a provision for that. And I really, I really believe it. We are going to see, and it's not someone having a ministry calling people up to the front and from the pulpit saying Shandai and people have to fall over <laughs> and say you are now miracles and healing. No, it's going to be natural supernatural yeah as we walk as we go as we speak to people across the uh, a table having coffee with them we get to operate in 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 the spirit of wisdom and revelation and understanding and the miraculous and to demonstrate the truth of the word of wisdom will will declare healings and miracles and we get to walk in a level of power as part of the natural way of Living. Living. Mm -hmm. Not to try and promote a ministry for ourselves and try and attract followers to our ministry or our church, but as a demonstration of God putting himself on display mm -hmm. in us. We are going to see, it's going to be, it's going to be astounding, but the natural way of living is going to be in the supernatural. Supernatural provision, supernatural protection, supernatural peace supernatural favor we will know no lack i'm convinced of this i'm convinced of yeah. this and it's it's funny i mean this is sorry there's something white on my sweater oh weird oh it's just a reflection <laughs> it's driving me crazy um something that i've noticed um uh, just and, it, and it's something so simple and, and you'll probably laugh about it um but i've noticed that every time i go to the store well besides getting asked if i'm over 60 but whatever that's that's just funny but um <laughs> so whatever yeah it's all the gray but every time i go to the store with Alyssa or david it's literally there's like nobody there or just a few people or we you know it's not like a massive line so we'll go in we'll get what we need and then we we go but as soon as we go out the line no matter where i'm at is like out the door and down the road or uh it's it's the weirdest thing or i'll go into a business if i'm alone sometimes and the people and i always i mean i I've already got to know people from the different stores that I that I frequent and I'll chat with them and they'll say like it was so slow but it's picked up all of a sudden you know it was like it's been dead for the past hour or two but now people start coming and I laugh because I'm like I don't think that's a coincidence Lord it's because I'm here and 
you're just bringing the business for this place because I'm here. And it's not because I'm doing anything, but it's because of the blessing of the Lord that follows. And I think as, as we, and that's just something simple. I mean, that's not even a, you know, a big whoop de do. Um, but, but I've noticed that and I always get a good giggle because it's like, Lord, what are you, what are you doing? That's so cool. Um, it's nothing that we have to brag about. It's nothing that we boast about. Um, it's just going to follow and there's going to be a sweet presence of the Lord with you wherever you go. It's as you keep yourself in a place of humility and you realize, Lord, let me decrease. And that's one of my prayers, Lord, let me decrease so much that what people see is you, that it's not me that's reflected, but it's completely you. The glory goes to you. Everything goes to you. And you will actually sense God start maneuvering things in your life. Like I know that for us and even musically for me, I could not handle, I don't think, um, the pressures of what a music industry life would, would bring when I was in my 20s and 30s, plus we were raising a family. Um, I can handle it now. And it's because I'm not looking after fame. I'm not looking after, I'm not chasing after that stuff. There's no reason to. I just need to be the authentic person that God's created me to be. And that's how all of us should be. So. So profound truth is that everything in creation will rise up in support of that which is legitimately son mm -hmm. of God. Everything in creation, mm -hmm. all, all created matter, all that is in the earth, as much as has been groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God, will rise up in support. Mm -hmm. I believe even, and I've declared this, even to those sons of God who have come to maturity and walk in the reality of who God is and the understanding of who God has called them to be. Even though they are farmers in the areas where there's no rain, where there's drought, where, where, where things, I believe mm -hmm. that the earth will rise in support of them. I can literally see in my mind's eye that their farm, the heavens will open and there will be rain and they will be flourishing mm -hmm. in the midst of drought and everything else because God's creation is rising up in support the favor of the lord and this is not um because you have a positive confession no i confess <laughs> these things are coming and i confess this over myself man that's norman winston peel's positive power of positive confession that's that's nonsense and witchcraft as, as as far as i'm concerned it's not god yes the power in the tongue but when we live in the reality of who mm -hmm. God has called us to be, and we walk in that, I, I believe there's going to be the favor of the Lord, the, the provision of the Lord, the promotion that comes from God, and even the earth rising up in support that where you plant your plants, they will grow and the other people's plants won't grow. Your potatoes will be big and the other potatoes won't grow. Your sheep will be happy happy and alive <laughs> when others are, are, are dying because of drought. I believe that there will be a supernatural provision. Yeah. And it's not so that we can make ourselves rich and, and say we don't have need of God. It is God putting himself on display through us to show his grace will always be sufficient to sustain and enable and to promote that which is the revelation, the revealing of the sons of God in the earth. No question. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we'll like it. No, we'll like it. No. Okay, so it's been an hour. It's been an hour so unless there are more questions, we're going to wrap, wrap it, it up, up for now. Um, but if, uh, if you have another question, sh shoot it off quickly. Send, press send real quickly, and um, we see if if I uh, if I've covered all the bases of of questions that we had. If I was to summarize, we are not to live with the same thinking of the world. We are not to live the stinking thinking, the stinking attitudes, 
the mindsets we don't see as the world sees we don't judge as the world mm -hmm. sees we don't we don't entertain the hurts of the past because Absolutely. those hurts were those hurts were perpetuated against a soul that was alive that was reigning and calling all the shots that soul has now come back can come under submission of the spirit the spirit of god your spirit is not insulted, hurt, or harmed. So when your soul comes under the reality of the flourishing spirit that you are, you no longer have to be a victim, you no longer have to feel sorry for yourself, and you live in the provision and the grace of God. Okay, last one. Lauren Moy, long steward. Okay, okay, she says, I know that the world is really focusing on racism right now. I have a question a bit more focused to South Africa. We have been fighting the gender-based violence pandemic since before COVID-19, which basically just distracted us from all the women and children that are being brutally murdered on a daily basis. It's for this reason that women, <coughs> including a lot of Christian women who are so against patriarchy and against submitting to men, how do we respond to that as a body of Christ, still manage to show the world that this is still how God ordained things to be, for the man to be the head of the house and wives to submit? It's tough trying to convince them with all the abuse of power happening. They see women who are submitting as weak, unopinionated, and even as if we agree with what is happening. Yeah, so I think the answer is very much to me the same as, mm -hmm. as the other answer about um, all the other things that the world lives in mm -hmm. and expects us to live in those realities and us not having to try and convince them. We don't have to try on and, and debate with them um, till they believe. I've never ever seen someone actually change their mind in a debate. Yeah, I've especially yeah. not seen it on Facebook when yeah. people are arguing <laughs> and everyone's... Going, have you ever seen someone on Facebook with these like 100 comments on a post that someone actually changed their mind because someone had a different opinion to theirs? Uh, they always hold on to their opinion till they die. Um, so what what changes people's minds is not how we can debate with them and how we can post a better argument or how we can come up with a better argument. It's it's what they see. Now, if if what you're living is fake, if you're saying, yeah, yeah, uh, it's working for me um, to submit to my husband, um, but yet you're either not submitting to your husband or... Um, the husband is is not um, uh, seeing his wife and loving her as Christ loves the church. Um, then you can't fool the world to say it works because you're not the standard. But when you are the standard, you don't have to convince them. Yeah. You know, it's like they say the truth is like a lion. It doesn't. You don't have to defend it. Just set it free. It'll defend itself. And if you just be the truth. You don't have to convince the whole world, but those that know your life can see the difference, even see the difference in our lives as to how we did live um, without submitting to God's uh, way and God's standard and the flourishing that they see when we do submit to God's uh, life and standard. And as I said before, our children can see it in Charlotte in my life. Um, as we in the last few years have had to make major adjustments in how we live according to God's standard. And that is the t test me and witness to our children. No other debate. No one can come and convince me with debates when I'm living the truth. And uh, you don't have to convince them with the debate or um, uh, uh, telling them, yeah, but women are this and men are that. But we must not enter into the thinking of the world. And I'm, I'm, and I'm cautioning our family not to enter into it on social media either. Don't enter into those yeah. debates. Don't get sucked up into thinking that you're going to fix the world. You're not going to fix gender-based violence. You are not. You're not going to fix um, people abusing children. You are not going to fix uh, men abusing women because they are going to drink, they're going to get drunk, they are going to be selfish. They are going to do. That's what the world does. That's how the world does it. All that can happen is the world can have a standard in which they can put them in jail and they can fine them and they can do that. And but 
that's not righteousness. That's just that's just the state having to punish and try and keep control. But how we make the difference is by being the standard, not by trying to change everyone in the world so that there are no um, abuses and the no injustices. That's not going to happen. But those who want to live, those who are seeking the truth, we are the standard. Husbands that say, I don't want to live like this anymore. Um, wives that, that, that say, I don't want to live like this anymore. Um, we can be a standard to them. We can then be the refuge to, that can teach them and disciple them and walk with them and show them the, the blessing of um, doing, it, doing it God's way. Um, in South Africa, we are not going to change the minds of people by arguing, by debating, or by social media posts. Even um, the, the thing that's going to change people's minds is when we live the standard, when they see it in our lives. And so our primary focus has to be seeing maturity come to the body of Christ. That none that call themselves sons of God are living like the world, that we hold ourselves accountable to the standard, the standard that is Christ, that we accept nothing else but the standard. We don't make excuses to say, yeah, but I don't feel like it, and I don't want to, and I deserve this, and we do not accept that. That's immaturity, and we are w moving towards maturity, and we're holding each other accountable. Spiritual fathers are holding sons accountable to come to maturity that we follow Christ as mature ones and we can encourage others to follow us as we follow Christ. But to live like the world and call ourselves the church, that is the biggest damage that we've done. We have the same levels of divorce in the church as the world and then oh, yeah. we say we're the church. We are not. That's the false church. Those that say, I don't have to submit to my husband and I don't have to love my wife. That's the false church because you are not the standard of Christ. But when we live that standard and we hold those that are the sons of God to that standard, we hold each other accountable to that standard. That's what we should be busy doing and not stand for the hypocrisy in the church. In the church, there's hypocrisy. And that's why the world doesn't see the standard. Because they're seeing the same statistics in the church that's as what what's in the saying, world. Yeah. So what do we have to offer them? Well, then it's just religion. Then it's just a money-making business scheme thing and ekasteli balang. I agree with them. Ekasteli <laughs> balang. Uh, but in the real thing, that which can change a life, that which can heal families, that which can restore uh, families, households, men, women, and children, that's what we are to live. Okay, so. Um, okay, we've gone over an hour. There haven't been any over an hour. questions. So. We're going to love you and leave you. And we'll see you next week. And we will see you again next week. Um, hold on. For those that are part of this household, we will speak straight and we will be real. What's fatty nonsense? Because God is not tolerating the, the, the inaccurate representation of him. He's dealing with it. He's sorting it out. And we have to come in line. We will be uh, moving towards the fullness of the statue of Christ being revealed through the church. All right, so God bless you. Um, for all of you that have joined us and been with us and that will watch in the future. Uh, and for the family, don't forget about the household meeting tonight. At we six. will, those that are in our uh, spiritual family that. Um, are in the in the household or, or the tribe of Sam, you're welcome to join us tonight at six o'clock. If you don't know about it and you are in our household, you need to get that information from your spiritual fathers. Yeah. They will give you the code. It is open to all those who are in the in in the house. Um, so we'll we might not see you all tonight, but we'll be there. Yeah, uh, and we'll be there together. All right. God bless you. Go Bye. and be the light. Grace and peace. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.